What's up everybody, welcome back to Alan's Beer and Sports Review, and uh, I just reviewed this, which I give it a six and a half, it's not bad, it's not fantastic, drinkable, and you want to get fucked up, you can get fucked up, um, that being said, it's time for the sports, Alan's Beer, Sports, and more, um, <clears throat> right now, you got the NHL playoffs going on, NBA playoffs going on. Major League Baseball is in full swing, and the Red Sox are on fire. Holy crap. They've started the season 15-2. and two. Now, I didn't check the night's uh, results, but even if they lost, I mean, that's still in the 18, first 18 games, 15-3. and three. I mean, that's fantastic. The Mets are in first place in the East. Now, it's early in the season. Uh, Matt Harvey, apparently, they need to either move him to the bullpen or down to the miners, or to insurance salesman. He just ain't. He just doesn't have what he used to have. Let's just say that after that surgery, Tommy John, it's just straight down. Um, NFL draft is coming up next Thursday. I'm so looking forward to that. And most importantly, Alabama's spring game is tomorrow, and. Tua broke his hand, so he's not going to be participating, but uh, nice to see what Jalen Hurts and just taking our other, our, our freshman quarterback, Mac Jones, see what he can do, um, see how Najee Harris has uh, progressed, see how Damian Harris looks, see how the defense looks, um, which really, Bama didn't lose a whole lot this year. Let's see, they lost, oh hell, Bradley Bozeman, lost Bo Scarborough, Calvin Ridley, uh, Deron Payne, Deshaun Hand, Rashad Evans, who did, uh, Ronnie Harrison, Mika Fitzpatrick, Anthony Averett, and Tony Brown. And Tony Brown, rotational, even though he has a talent to start, Anthony Averett is a starter, shouldn't have been well, and we lost Levi Wallace but um, so that's three corners two safeties a defensive tackle and inside linebacker so we're rebuilding the secondary this year uh, offense lost Ridley and Scarborough and Bozeman which Bozeman he, he took and filled in after Ryan Kelly he did okay. I mean, he wasn't nothing special. So, maybe they can move. And I've seen a projected uh, starting lineup for the upcoming season. And if Alex Leatherwood takes and develop nicely, uh, they can move Jonah Williams possibly from left tackle to center. And Alex Leatherwood into the starting uh, left tackle position, which would take and give us a I mean, with Leatherwood, Pierce Bacher, um, Jonah Williams, uh, we've got two others on the line that are returning starters. I mean, we'd have a killer, a killer starting offensive line, and two is projected to be the starting quarterback. Which I mean, look, Jalen Hurts for what he provided in 2016 was awesome. Last year, it was very apparent that he is more suited to running. I'll be honest with you, Jalen Hurts can throw the ball, he's not very accurate a lot of times, but if he'd have went somewhere like Georgia Tech, you want to talk about being a dangerous team, holy shit, they'd be dangerous, because he'd be perfect to run the, he'd be very perfect to run the option, the triple option that's run down there, but he also has enough of an arm and enough accuracy that he could really, really, really do some damage. Um, they'd really surprise a lot of folks because uh, he'd give them a dimen added dimension they haven't had really since, I think, uh, Joe Hamilton, um, to be honest with you. Uh, but this, right now, other than, for me, the spring game tomorrow, the biggest thing coming up as far as I'm concerned is... NFL draft. I've been reading all kind of mock drafts. Hell, I've got. And I'll show you real quick. See the computer screen. 
this is free agents and this is mock drafts it's my favorite time of the year for the nfl other than the postseason just because there's so much stuff going on between the free agent moves i mean des bryant got cut by the cowboys everybody was figuring that they're going to ask, ask him to restructure his contract which would have made sense um 16 million a year and averaging 56 catches and like 600 yards receiving over the last three seasons really ain't cutting it for 16 million a year but instead of doing that they just released him uh and he's been a staple there for freaking what, seven eight nine ten years now and he's just you know it's not something that you expected so now the question is as far as the cowboys are concerned where are they going in the draft um a lot of folks think that uh, Calvin Ridley projects there, which, to be honest, I wouldn't want that as a Bama fan, just for the simple fact of um, they really don't have anybody behind them as a, as a true number two, um, or number three for that matter. I mean, Cole Beasley is the biggest name they've got at wide receiver that I can think of right off hand. Um, they've still got... You know, they've still got the tight end there, but Jason Witten, man, he's turning, what, 60 this year? I mean, he's basically running, he's basically got a walker with the tennis balls on the bottom of it going down the field these days and just throwing his hand up like, throw me the ball, I'm here, sonny. You know, I just, <clears throat> he would take and give, he would give, he would give them a, a, a reliable pass catching option but he'd be really their only pass catching option other than whenever what they would have taken turn real quick uh, and uh, surprise a defender that he could actually still maybe turn that quick even though he's not running real fast um, everybody's projecting uh, for my Colts this is what I keep seeing either Bradley Chubb and I've seen a lot of people take and uh, give them uh, Saquon Barkley. I'd rather see Nelson, the guard from Notre Dame, get picked by the Colts to take a short that offensive line. If Kelly can come back uh, healthy and Costanzo can come back healthy, adding somebody like Nelson to the offensive line would really take and solidif help solidify it. And if Luck is able to return by the time the regular season uh, starts back up again. I mean, that'd be just, he'd have protection finally. He hasn't had that in his whole career in Indianapolis. Um, which, to be honest, luckily they've got Jacoby Brissett behind them, but it, in my opinion, third or fourth round, it wouldn't hurt them to draft a, uh, a quarterback as an insurance policy because uh, with the way this injury has gone, he, I mean, he hasn't thrown a pass since 2015. 2000 or 2016 it's 2018 now so you know it's really concerning um, most drafts have Sam Donald going uh, at the top of the draft um, which he's uber talented like I said like I've said before my my concern is he's from USC um, and USC their quarterbacks are kind of a mixed bag I mean Matt Leiner being a prime example of why you don't take and draft somebody that high, who's, uh, especially who's had an inconsistent senior year. Uh, but the big thing he does have going for him is he got a really strong arm. Um, but his decision-making, it wasn't all there last year. And for somebody who had started the previous year and going into a new year with basically the same set of same cast of players around him, made worse mistakes than what he did as a, first year starters I mean for me that would be concerning so you know I'll be honest with you I'm not impressed with this crop of quarterbacks I, I'm really not um you know Josh Rosen everybody's like oh he's most pro ready he wasn't very good at UCLA in my opinion I mean he really wasn't he wasn't nothing special um he's got an arm he's accurate but he bad decision making and it's not like UCLA was bereft of any kind of playmakers so I mean what's the issue 
You know, you really only had, above you, you really only had Stanford, you know, there for his first season and a half, Oregon. Um, now, I will say Utah's defense has always been pretty stout. Uh, so, I mean, you know, there's that. They play them every year, just about. So, some of it makes you just kind of scratch your head and go, what the hell? Hmm. But a lot of teams have the Browns going with Sam Darnold. Then they have Saquon Barkley going to the Giants, which makes the most sense. Um, although, to be honest with you, you could make a case for them taking a guard. Uh, you, you could make a case for them taking Nelson at number two. Because uh, their offensive line did the best impersonation of Swiss cheese by any team, I think, in the National Football League. They're, Running backs couldn't do shit last year. And they have added Nate Solder, but unless they add a little, couple more pieces, you know, you, you draft Saquon Barkley with the second pick, your, your, your second round pick better be an offensive lineman. And your third round pick, find your heir apparent to Eli Manning. So otherwise, uh, Barkley's not going to do a whole lot of shit. The Jets, a lot of folks have uh, Rosen going to the Jets. Um, number four, they have Bradley Chubb, which would be awesome for the Browns. Uh, taking a pair of Chubb and Miles Garrett together. Um, that'd be the start of a really firm foundation for a defensive line. And the Browns have really needed something like that for a long, long time. I mean, they really have. One second. Now, I took real quick and went on the computer. Um, I have found one mock draft who has the Browns taking Josh Rosen number one, which would make sense. I mean, he's between him and Darnold, he's considered the most pro ready. Um, and you know, the good thing is, is this year, whoever they draft at number one for their quarterback of the future, I mean, technically they could sit them the whole year as long as Tyrod Taylor doesn't get hurt. Um, and actually, they could sit him all year, even if Ty, even if uh, Taylor does get hurt, because they got to show him Kaiser back there. It's not like he didn't have any experience. He wasn't uh, wasn't great, but he wasn't god awful. Uh, you know, like Mark Sanchez, but but fumble awful. But you know, he was somewhere in between. Um, so I mean, you know, in another year of seasoning, even as a backup, you know, he could probably win them a couple games until Taylor got better. Um, so, you know, Rosen would actually make some sense, too, in having him learn uh, for a year. Um, a lot of folks have, uh, and I've seen, this one has it right here, too, but, uh, there are some that are projected Baker Mayfield going to the Jets, and I'll be honest with you, Baker Mayfield, the, uh, he reminds me of a cross between Ryan Leaf and Johnny Manziel with his character issues. I mean, he really does. Uh, now, that being said, Jimmy uh, Winston had character issues going up to the draft. Since he's gotten in the NFL, there hasn't been a problem. And maybe that's the case with uh, Baker Mayfield once he gets in the NFL. Because, to be honest with you, the boy is talented. I mean, he could throw, the, he could sling the football like nobody's business. He's got a gunslinger mentality. He's also really accurate. Um, and he's got that will to win, which you want to see in a quarterback. But the problem is, uh, he's, um, how do you put this? Uh, he seems to be a bad influence. That's the only way I know how to put it. I think at number three, probably Josh, I think it'll wind up going Sam Darnold. Or, now, some people have said Josh Allen will wind up being taken by the uh, Browns, um, which if that's the case, they're going for potential, and Allen seen as the biggest boomer bust potential at quarterback this year, which they really don't need. If I was them, I'd take a safe pick, but um, I have a feeling if not, it'll wind up being Darnold, uh, and that being the case, if it's Darnold, I have a feeling it'd be Darnold, and then the Browns will wind up taking, or the Giants will wind up taking uh, Saquon Barkley, because Really, you pair a, a running back with 
on Barkley's talent with uh, Eli Manning. It would take a lot of stress off of Eli Manning. Um, and it would open up the passing game, too, which they haven't been able to really do the last couple of years. All, they've had to rely on a passing game because they've had no running game. They had a running game, have to drop an extra man in the box. Because um, I think even if, you know, they'll probably want to get another offensive lineman or two in the draft. But the addition of Nate Salter will help in just in the simple fact that they've got somebody to run the running back behind. Um, I think number two would wind up being Saquon Barkley. I think number three would be Josh Rosen. Number four with the Browns second pick. They'll probably take, um, I'll be honest with you, they're either going to take Bradley Chubb or they'll wind up taking the guard um, if they don't trade down. But to take and get two franchise-type players in the first four picks of a draft, it, in my opinion, doesn't make any sense to them whatsoever to take and trade down. So I, I can see them taking Bradley Chubb because I think he's actually better than Miles Garrett, who they took last year. Miles Garrett's talented, but Bradley Chubb's got the motor to go with the talent. Um, the Broncos, um, I could see them taking uh, taking a guard from uh, Notre Dame, but um. Yeah, Quentin Nelson, I can see them taking him, taking short up that offensive line. Or I can see them if, uh, taking somebody like uh, Tremaine Edwards or um, even trading down a little bit. Or they could take a, a, a Minka Fitzpatrick or a, um, who's that, who's that quarter, cornerback again from? I know I've seen him. Oh, Denzel Ward, I can see them taking him. Um, they did take him, uh, trade away Aqib Tlaib to the Rams, which the Rams are dangerous this year, man. They really, the Rams are going to be something else. But uh, I could see them doing that. Um, or they could possibly, you know, I think they could probably trade back to probably 12 or 15, um, which would take and be... Buffalo, anywhere between Buffalo and the Cardinals. And I can see the Cardinals jumping up there so they could take and get themselves a Josh Allen or something like that. I really could. Um, I think the Colts wind up taking Nelson if he's still there. If not, it'll wind up being like Tremaine Edwards or um, it could be somebody like um, Mika Fitzpatrick or even Vita Vey. Um Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think Minka Fitzpatrick's one of them. They 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 still need they still need uh, defensive back help on that back end. They really do. And Minka being scheme versatile or him being so versatile, being able to play at nickel, being able to play over either one of the uh, outside receivers or being able to play safety, dropping the box and everything like that. I think it'd be perfect um, for the Bears. If Tremaine Edwards is there, I, he might wind up going there, or they could wind up taking like a, a Roquan Smith. Uh, the 49ers, I think they'll wind up. And it, a lot of this depends on how everything plays out. Because if Vita Vey is still, you know, at uh, at the uh, 49ers where they go to pick at, I can see them taking him. Same thing with the Bears. Or, you know, a lot of people have Tremaine Edwards going to the Bears, and that seems seems like it'd be a good landing spot for him. But Oakland, Oakland could take Vita Vey if he's still there, or Tremaine Edwards or Roquan Smith. It all depends. Uh, the Dolphins, a lot of people have them taking and trying to trade up to get a quarterback, and I can see that happening because of Tanny Hill isn't he wasn't drafted by the front office people that are in Miami right now um, he wasn't drafted by the coaches there now so I mean I could see that happening but um, I think they want to take they've made an investment in them that took and give them a three-year four-year like 60 something million um, extension a year and a half ago before he got injured so I could see them you know holding 
holding pat with that and maybe taking like a McGlinchey or um, even taking a Deron Payne or uh, Derwin James or something like that to shore up what they've got. Um, I just think this year's draft's going to be real interesting because a lot of people have 100 different players going to 100 different places. Um, like I see right here, Buffalo Bills. And number 22, Calvin Ridley of Alabama. Which would be awesome. We catch him passes from an Alabama, former Alabama quarterback, um, A.J. McCarron. Which is one reason why I hope the Bills don't trade up to take and get another quarterback. They uh, maybe wait until the second or third round and draft somebody. Um, because they did give McCarron a, a three-year deal, two-year deal. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many different ways that I think this might go. But I, I think the top four is definitely going to wind up being Darnold, Rosen, um, Barkley, and Nelson. I mean, Chubb. I really do. And then after that, I think that's where things really start getting fun. Because the Browns could trade, or the Broncos could trade down. They could stand pat. Same with the Colts. And if those two do wind up staying still, I don't think anybody's going to take and do anything. I don't think uh, 7 through 10 is going to change at all. It'll be 11 through 18, 19 that will wind up having seeing the action happen at. And I think the most interesting uh, interesting thing this year, so uh, as far as the draft is concerned, is the Patriots with the two first round picks because they could package them together and take a leapfrog a couple of people, uh, taking jump from like number twenty what twenty two and thirty one. They can uh, jump from yeah, no twenty three and thirty one. They could they could package those together and they could jump up sixteen seventeen. And draft a defensive end, a tackle. Uh, I mean, you know, you've got Marcus Davenport. You've got Connor Williams from Texas. You've got Denzel Ward. You've got uh, possibly Deron Payne um, if he falls that far. Um, you've got a Calvin Ridley, a Josh Jackson at quarterback, uh, cornerbacks. I mean, they could, fill a, they could fill a really specific need by taking and packaging those two to move up. Keep their second-round uh, second picks, third-round, fourth-round, everything like that, but get an impact player that depending on how things shake out in the top 10 is going to really wind up taking an influence and you know depending on who falls there i really think they can make that jump and, and it wouldn't surprise me because of the way they are but um anyways i think i've let this drag on long enough yeah 23 minutes into it that being said Y'all have a lovely evening. Give me a like and subscribe on YouTube. A like and share on Facebook. Peace out.